this attempt to ban books. It hit a record high in 2022, last year. That's according to the American Library Association. They released a report yesterday. And this report said attempted book bans and restrictions at schools and public libraries continue to surge. Now, this is not coming from Jews. It's not coming from Muslims. It's not coming from Democrats. It's not coming from LGBTQ folks. It's not coming from progressives. It's coming from one rotten sector of this society, the Christian fascist right. This is where the the font of this poison is located. There were more than 1,200 challenges compiled by the American Library Association in 2022, which is nearly double the record total from 2021. And it is the most ever recorded by the American Library Association since it began keeping data 20 years ago. Now, I'm getting this information from the Associated Press. Deborah Caldwell Stone, who directs the Library Association's Office for Intellectual Freedom, said, quote, I've never seen anything like this. The last two years have been exhausting, frightening, and outrage-inducing, end quote. Now, the report released yesterday by the Library Association not only documents the, 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 the growing number of challenges to books in libraries, school libraries, public libraries, but the, the, the nature of the reports is changing. Uh, for example, a few years ago, complaints usually came with parents when they would refer to an individual book that they just didn't want it in a school library rather than saying they didn't want their kid to read it. They wanted to go for the the whole Megillah. You know, let's just get rid of the book. Burn it. But now, the requests are often about removing bunches of books. And these demands are being organized by uh, nationally organized groups like the fascist organization called Moms for Liberty. How's that? Moms for Liberty. Um, and they state right up front that their mission is of, quote, unifying, educating, and empowering parents to defend their parental rights at all levels of government. Oh, that, that is such communist rhetoric that it's being used in a fascist way. But that's such bullshit. <sighs> okay, deep breath. Now, according to the American Library Association, last year more than 2,500 different books were objected to. I said there were 1,200 challenges, but there were 2,500 objected to. In 2021, there were 1,800. And in 2019, 500. And in so many of these cases where these fascist groups like Moms for Liberty objected, there were hundreds of books challenged in a single complaint. Uh, Now, you have to understand, and you don't need me to tell you this, that so many of these complaints have been generated by people who don't read. They listen to the rhetoric put in their heads by these Christian fascists. They go online and, and read bullshit on social media posts or in these Facebook groups. They don't read. These are functionally illiterate people who make these charges. And I wonder if Moms for Liberty was really established by moms or by women. I rather doubt it. Now, the Library Association bases all these numbers on media accounts and voluntary reporting from libraries and schools. And they acknowledge that the real number is probably much higher. And librarians around the country, not just public libraries, but school libraries, Uh, have reported to the ALA about being harassed and threatened with violence, legal action, or the old standby by fascist scum 
death threats. Um, the president of the American Library Association said this, quote, in a statement, everyday professional librarians sit down with parents to thoughtfully determine what reading material is best suited for their child's needs. Now, many library workers face threats to their employment, their personal safety, and in some cases, threats to prosecution for providing books to young people that they and their parents want to read, end quote. So it, 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 it's not just coming from, from legitimate, real parent groups who, who have an honest question about a certain book. And they sit down with a representative from the ALA and they go over it and then they realize, okay, it's not what we thought it was. That's not where these, so many of these complaints are coming from. They're coming from this shithole of, of poison that is run by the Christian fascists in this country. And the head of the ALA said that some of the books have been targeted by liberals because of racist language. For example, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. But the vast majority of complaints come from these neo-fascists, and they're directed at works about or, uh, or by lesbian, gay, trans people, or racial themes. In, in, in addition to the challenges now uh, put forth by some of these um, bullshit citizens' groups, they're not citizens' groups. They're groups run by the Christian fascists. But in addition to that, there have been bills that facilitate the restriction of books. Have been uh, These bills have been proposed or passed in various state legislatures. Uh, for example, Arizona, Iowa, Texas, Missouri, Oklahoma. And of course, you know about Florida, where little fascist bastard governor there, Ron DeSantis, has approved laws to review reading materials and to limit classroom discussion of not just gender identity issues, but also race, and has had books pulled from school libraries statewide indefinitely including titles I've not read, well, I've read one of these, but listen to the titles. Looking for Alaska by John Green. Hopeless by Colleen Hoover. The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. <laughs> and Dim Sum for Everyone by Grace Lynn. And that's a picture story. Now, the one we all are or should be familiar with is Margaret Atwood's dystopian novel of these Christian fascist son of a bitches as laid out in the book The Handmaid's Tale and the television series. I'm sure you probably saw it. And The Handmaid's Tale, in my mind, when I first read this years ago, I thought, my God, this is a roadmap. This is a training manual. Not, not that that's what At Atwood was trying to warn us. But this is how the Christian fascists absorbed it. It's a training manual, absolutely. And more recently, Florida's Martin County School District removed dozens of books from the middle schools and high schools in that county, including numerous works by um, Toni Morrison, for example. Her Pulitzer Prize-winning novel, Beloved, James Patterson's Maximum Ride. Um, all sorts of books. A decision which James Patterson criticized on Twitter as, quote, arbitrary and borderline absurd, end quote. Well, of course it is. But it's much worse than that. This is fascism in its early, clearly seen stages, if one cares to look. The problem, and you can look at the rise of Nazism in Germany, the problem is that people in such an advanced society as Germany in the 20s and 30s, even though they were dealing like the rest of the world with the aftermath of World War I, with the global depression, with uh, the, the flu pandemic, 
But even with all that, a country as advanced culturally, um, scientifically, as Germany fell under the sway of this terrorism that we came to define as Nazism. And it did so with the full cooperation of the Christian church, the full cooperation of the Catholic church. Um, DeSantis, for his part, says that reports of mass bannings is a hoax. Another example of don't believe what your eyes and your brain tell you. Believe what my rotten mouth is spewing into your vacant, I hope, head. This is what every Nazi leader wants you to believe. Not what you know to be the truth, but what he is telling you is the truth. And in a statement released earlier this month, that's when DeSantis called that the Bass Mannings uh, a hoax. He said that the allegations of these bannings, he calls them allegations, you and I can call them proof. He said they reveal, quote, some are attempting to use our schools for indoctrination, end quote. This is exactly what every fascist son of a bitch says. I don't care if it's a person from China or Brazil or Hungary or Russia or the United States or the UK. This is what they say. This is what Putin is saying now. There are attempts in Ukraine to indoctrinate people there into fascism. This is what Putin says. This is his justification for the slaughter that this rotten son of a bitch has caused the people of Ukraine. It's worth noting that some books do come back after being challenged by these sorry bastards. For example, Florida's Duval County Public Schools, that includes the city of Jacksonville. Officials there were criticized, and rightly so, after they removed a children's biography of the late Puerto Rican baseball star, Roberto Clemente. The book was titled Roberto Clemente, The Pride of the Pittsburgh Pirates. They removed it. And in February last month, the school board there, the school board there announced the book would be again on the shelves. They explained, well, we needed to renew it. And we needed to take it out and review it and make sure it didn't violate any state laws. Roberto Clemente? One of the reasons they were terrified of it is because Roberto was very outspoken about the treatment of his island home, Puerto Rico, by the U.S. government. And that was grounds enough to get the book removed. We have got to become more organized against this terror. We must, okay? And I hope we will. Hi, True Seekers. Mike Malloy here. You know, the Progressive Voices Network brings you commercial-free commentary from today's leading progressive radio hosts and pundits, like me, Mike Malloy, 24 hours a day. I'm not your typical old guy from the 80s or the 90s talk radio host, and Progressive Voices is not your typical talk radio network. It's a listener-supported nonprofit with no corporate control whatsoever over our broadcast. So hosts like me, Mike Malloy, can, are free to rant and scream and carry on about whatever we like. We're often controversial, but we're never boring. Weeknights, 9 p.m. in the East, 6 p.m. in the West, on the Progressive Voices Network. Always progressive, always on. I'm Mike Malloy. Keep it lit.